Welcome to Alexandria, the greatest center of learning and trade in the ancient world, a rival for Rome herself. Come with us as we journey through her streets and see her wonders. Alexander the Great first came to Egypt in 332 BC to be proclaimed king and god before encountering the Persians. While here, he commissioned the founding of Alexandria. Alexander didn't build this city, though. That fell to the Ptolemies. They took a small fishing village of Rakotis and turned it into a world power. They turned one harbor, which was interesting, into two and built streets that expanded the city. According to the ancient geographer Strabo, Alexandria was in the shape of the Chalmus and a horse rider's cloak. The city was 3.2 square miles along the Egyptian coast and had three separate communities, so large that they needed their own districts and law. Alexandria was a planned city, laid out on a grid. Its central street was Canopic Way, which was four and a half miles long, running from the Gate of the Sun to the Gate of the Moon. It intersected the Street of the Soma, the last resting place of Alexander the Great. Canopic Street in Alexandria was never idle in the ancient world. Here, glass was blown, papyrus was made, linen cloth was woven, and the double harbors on either side of the Hephaestadian Bridge were always being loaded and unloaded. It was always. And the great ships left Alexandria taking their goods across the Mediterranean. And the most important ships were actually those bearing what Egypt had always produced, grain. Grain that saved Rome time and again from famine. Any tour of Alexandria has too many stops to make. On one end, there's the Hippodrome, the other Pompey's Pillar in the Serapeum, Temple of Di Isis, the Theater of Dionysus, and of course, the two greatest, the Lighthouse and the Library. The Lighthouse of Alexandria was the first of its kind and set the standard for centuries to come. It was operational for over a thousand years and a wonder to the Arabs as much as the ancient world. It also was a tourist attraction in the ancient world. The White House had three sections. The base housed government offices and stables and barracks. The second was for tourists and had food and shops. The third was the great beacon. And atop that was a statue, which might have been Poseidon, might have been Zeus, and might have been Alexander. The greatest library in the world was not just a library. It was, in fact, a museum, a mausion, a place where inspiration occurred and research and discovery. It was amazing. The Museum of Alexandria ha was a vast complex that housed all types of research and dealt with every known subject. So it had multiple buildings, a multiple reading rooms, as well as laboratories. Of course, there was an actual library here, the most fabulous in the ancient world. Every major work was collected here including things like the books of the kings mentioned in the Old Testament, long lost to us. Every scholar brought works here, and they were housed and could be such a collection. It's no surprise that every subject known was studied at Alexandria, and it became the first university in the modern sense, with endowed chairs and paid professors and researchers who scoured the world in search of new knowledge and new ideas. It's often overlooked that there was tremendous literary work done at Alexandria. Codification of the library itself begins library sciences, but there was also work on the standardizing texts of Homer and other great works. Perhaps of everything done here at Alexandria, the thing I would have liked to have seen the most was the translation of the Septuagint translation from Hebrew into Greek 
of the Old Testament, perhaps done for the Jews of Alexandria. The first chair of mathematics at Alexandria was none other than the father of geometry, Euclid himself. It's no wonder that there were so many discoveries here, from the heliocentric theories to cataloging stars to planetariums and trigonometry. Some scholars came to Alexandria and stayed. Others came for only a time. Archimedes of Syracuse was one and such scholar. Here, though, at Alexandria, it is thought that he invented the screw, a pump to raise water from one level to another. Some scholars cannot be contained within one field. Such was the case with Eratosthenes. He is the father of geography and wrote the first great geography text of three books. But he also determined how to figure out prime numbers and how to measure the earth. Of course, not every discovery at Alexandria was right. Ptolemy, the scientist, not the ruler, invented epicycles to prove mathematically what was going on with planetary orbits in a geocentric system. Unfortunately, he was dead wrong. For all its splendor, though, the Library of Alexandria is no more. It fell prey to successive wars and fires from Julius Caesar all the way to the Arab period. And the splendor of the city died, as did the library. Until a few years ago, the story had to end there. But now it does not. For Egypt has built again. And now there is the Bibliotheca Alexandrina on the site, or at least as close as they can get, because much is underwater, of the old library. Thank you for coming on our tour of Alexandria and her wonders. Much was lost, but there is much here that remains that inspires not only myself, but hopefully you, and has others for generations.